Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea Nebby and today I'm going to talk about time management. Stay tuned. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I wanted to show you guys like the schedule that I created with my phone, but I'm filming from my phone, so I can't. I just want to show you guys what how how much you can really do with like a schedule like on your phone i let me maybe if i do this okay i'm scared to show you guys my screen but anyway if you if you can see right here's the schedule that i made let me i don't need you guys on my notepad all right mind your business okay <laughs> i'm like i'm like trying to cover myself Okay, anyway, here's my schedule. Hopefully there's nothing too revealing there. Where's my mouse? Um, ugh, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Okay, this is hard. Basically what I'm trying to show you is that like, I have scheduled my life to a T and yes, it does follow a rainbow pattern because I like rainbows and colors. And this really just helps me, you know, get through my day and know what I should be doing at any given moment. You'll see that a lot of the blocks say study, right? And it's not really scheduled tightly. That's because I, I originally had it very tightly scheduled and I realized that like Stanford classes are you know, largely required from 1.30 to 5.30 and even sometimes from 9.30 to 12.30 and anything could happen. Like anything could happen during that time. So I just kind of put it as study, as basically a time where I should either be studying or I'm in class, one or the other. But you know, having such a tight routine has been very helpful, especially like a visual routine. I personally like, oh my goodness, did you guys see that mandatory dance? <laughs> Stop. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, that is on Sundays. Anyway, <laughs> man, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really, really great to, to schedule tightly because I don't know about your school. Your school might be different, but you are going to have so many classes. You are like, if I can think about like my class schedule in undergrad, it wasn't really like classes from morning till till afternoon or I was gonna say morning till night, but it wasn't really like classes back to back nonstop all the time. They were usually like s days, most days had like gaps in them, you know, more or less. Some days were kind of back to back, but that was usually like two days a week or something. But in medical school, it's like, there's so many classes, like there's so much you need to learn, so much you need to know, so much class time you need to cover. So even if you want to like watch the lectures and double speed afterwards, like it's still a lot of lectures to get through because you're constantly getting new lectures. And a lot of your classes are mandatory. Like I didn't realize how many classes or how much of your total amount of classes were mandatory. That was a real bummer, I'm not gonna lie. It was a huge bummer. But yeah, like you wanna stay on top of the scheduling of your school. You want to make sure that your personal schedule flows seamlessly with school. I really don't think you have to go to class in real time. I would actually, just as a challenge, I would challenge you to start the year off by not going to classes, which I know is really like, oh my gosh, what? It, it's it's probably gonna be hard to adhere to because you. You want to make friends and I think you should make friends so maybe like stop going to class after the first month just to see how you do. There's so many students who start off as like religious class goers and then they stop going to class within the first like they end up stop going to class like in their second year and they're like, whoa, I should have done this sooner. And I definitely see what they're talking about now that we've transitioned to Zoom classes. I really encourage you to try out, which goes back to my flexibility video, like try out not going to class. But you know, whether you go to class or not, like you really need a tight schedule. You need to be on top of everything and you're gonna have so many things at hit, coming at you that it's gonna be really important to stay on top of it all and make sure you put every assignment on your calendar that's that's something that i found really helpful because you're gonna have a lot of assignments a lot coming at you all the time and i think different medical school programs different schools are going to be better or worse at being clear and coordinated about when your assignments are. And this also will vary from class to class, but 
whether your school is great at you know communication and coordination or really bad at it you still need to get your work done so you really just want to be on top of all your assignments one thing that i found really helpful even though it is time intensive is once you get the syllabus for a class once you have the rubric for like how a class is set up and what they want from you usually the syllabus will give you a schedule of when all your assignments are due put that on your calendar i can't tell you how helpful it is because sometimes i'll look at my calendar and the, it's like problem set due what what and then I go and I'm like oh I really do have a problem set due or rather I'll, it'll say like problem set due on like Friday or something and I'll put the reminder two days ahead of time and I'm like what but then I go and I'm like oh yeah I do have a problem set due in two days and I'm really glad that I was reminded two days ahead of time so I can prepare, you know, it's really important because maybe like the director of that class did send out an email saying like, oh, you have a problem set due, but you may have missed it because you were tired and you get like 50 emails a day, which probably will happen when you get to medicine. I mean, it happens to me. I don't know if it happens to everyone, but you do get 50 emails a day. So it's really important to make sure you're on top of all your assignments. Don't let it get the best of you. I think when you, when you think about like all the classes you have to go to and all the assignments, that you have in terms of like a lot of classes do like weekly quizzes problem sets you know all these different things i think those two things like the amount of class you have to endure and the, the amount of assignments that you have i think that is what makes med school feel like you're drinking from a fire hydrant as opposed to i don't know taking a shower or whatever or, or no drinking out of a regular fountain right i think that's what makes med school overwhelming so you want to make sure that you're really 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 on top of it to the best of your ability and yeah, me personally, I, I definitely found find beauty in a strict routine. Med School Insiders definitely echoed this. I think they have a whole video on like how to like live by a schedule or how to have a routine, but having a strict routine that you go by every day, I don't think it works for everyone. I think if you're more of a type B personality, first of all, how'd you make it into medical school? <laughs> Okay, no shade, no shade. But no, if you're more of a type B personality, then like routines may not be your jam. May routines may not be like the best for you. So like, you know, do what works for you ultimately. But if you're more like me, if you are type A, you will find a routine to be actually really freeing because you don't have to worry about making sure you're gonna get everything done in a day because you already scheduled time to make sure everything gets done. And if you're running behind, you can look at your schedule and figure out how you need to adjust. You can look your look at your schedule for the rest of the day, the next day, the rest of the week and figure out how you need to adjust. And you'll know and rest in the fact that everything is handled. And that's really important. So I highly recommend getting into a, a strict schedule. Something else that I really really like is doing the same thing every day. I wake up every day at 5 a.m. even on the weekends. I try to even do it during vacation but that kind of falls apart just because on vacation in order to wake up at 5 a.m. you have to go to sleep at like 9 or 10. Me personally if you want to do that four hour sleep in a day I I really send what is it called blessings and prayers to your body or whatever. Listen, I will fear for your body if you only want to sleep on like basically less than six hours a day. But if if you know if you're like me, you want seven to eight hours, then in order to wake up at five a.m. feeling refreshed and ready to go, you have to go to sleep at like nine or ten. And oftentimes, what I find when I'm on vacation with family, things are getting juicy at around like nine thirty, ten. So you don't really want to go to sleep right away, and then you end up going to sleep at like eleven, twelve, and all of a sudden your schedule's ruined. And it's fine; it's family time. You know, you do what you got to do. But um, I mean, even still, I usually that only happens like for one or two days. I still think it's important to maintain a healthy circadian rhythm even when you're on vacation with your family because the more like for example one issue some people tend to run into when they have trouble waking up early or waking up at a certain time is they think that they can wake up you know at 5 a.m on the weekdays and then wake up whenever they feel like it on the weekend because it's the weekend I don't think your body knows the difference between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So, <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you're consistent all the time. That way it really becomes second nature to wake up at 5 a.m. It, it really, to me, just like a lot of different habits in life, once you start doing it after a while, it won't even seem that serious. You know, um, I've been waking up at 5 a.m. for years and it's, it's 
I love it. I live by it. It's it's really fun to me. I don't know, like you get to watch the sunrise. Like, I don't know, it's really nice. That's just me. Last but not least, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The amount of people who ask for a day in the life, I don't think you're gonna get one, okay? I don't think you're gonna get one. I considered doing one at one point, like once COVID hit and I realized that I didn't have to, cause my biggest qualm, my biggest like issue with doing a day in the life was I didn't want to walk around medical school with a camera in my face, a camera in other people's faces, you know, filming people who didn't and couldn't consent to be filmed. Like, I really did not like that. I really didn't want to do that. But then I was like, okay, it's COVID. I'm doing Zoom classes. Maybe I could just do a day in the life at home, but that seems really boring. And I, d I don't really feel like doing it. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't feel like doing it. If you want to know a day in the life, look at my schedule, okay? It's, I wake up. I can tell you a day in my life when I'm in medical school. And this is honestly, Honestly, honestly what happens okay I wake up oh it says 6 a.m because I'm on a different time zone but I wake up at 5 and I try to do 30 minutes of Anki then I do actually you know this is this is actually a bit of an old schedule because I at one point I was doing 30 minutes of Anki but then my Anki load because I was consistent you know ended up being only like 60 minutes long instead of uh, 90. So I kind of threw out that first minute, that first, that first bit of Anki. So the truer schedule is like wake up at five, do yoga right away. I usually do yoga for like 20 or 30 minutes. Then I meditate for 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes. Then I work out for two hours. Sometimes I go hike. Sanford has like a dish where you could just like walk and like see a lot of cool things or I work out in my room or you know whatever I have to do then right after working out I make myself breakfast and I shower I try to check emails during this time but I'm not gonna lie my workout usually runs longer than I would like and I've been working on that so like I, I end up like showering and you know eating breakfast in like 30 minutes instead of an hour um, and I do have a 30 minute chunk to plan my day but there's not a lot of planning involved it's more so a time for me to check my schedule to make sure I don't have any like meetings that um are kind of outliers in my schedule just to, to, to be aware of everything that I have to do today everything that is due today everything that I have scheduled for today and then classes start for me at 9 30 and I usually go to all of my required classes if I'm not in class between 9 30 and 12 30 if I'm not in class then I will study for a class and then you know freedom strikes at like 12 30. <laughs> And at that point, I'm making lunch and I try to get in there. It's not even I try. I do get in 30 minutes of Anki during lunch. It's really important because I'm telling you, it will build up over time and you will resent yourself. So I do 30 minutes of Anki during lunch, but I have you know, 60 minutes for lunch. So 30 minutes is Anki and 30 minutes is YouTube. You know what I mean? Live your life. And that's that. Then after you, from like 1.30 to 5.30, I go back into class mode. Based on Q1, I assume Q2 is going to be the same way. Basically from 1.30 to 5.30, for Mondays and Fridays, there's POM and POM is always required. So like, I know I'll be in class at least Mondays and Fridays from 1.30 to 5.30. Also to put things in context, in my school, we don't have any class is on Wednesday ever. So Wednesdays from 9.30 to 12.30 and 1.30 to 5.30, I'm usually just like studying hardcore. Then at 5.30, I, you know, break away from the laptop or you know the book or whatever and I prepare dinner it's usually meal prepped I don't really like spend time like cooking dinner unless it's like little things now that I like you know do classes from home I do spend more time like cooking things fresh but not too much time because I don't have time you know um so <laughs> Most of my life is meal prepped, okay? Most of my life is meal prepped. And, but I, I will do my second or third round of Anki, usually second, because I kind of skip the morning Anki. I do my second round of Anki for 30 minutes. And I set a timer, like as soon as I know it's, you know, as soon as I actually have an alarm for like 12.35 and 5.35, because I know sometimes classes run a bit longer and I don't want my alarm to go off in the middle of class. So I set it for like 12.35 and 5.35. Once the alarm goes off, I set a 30 minute timer timer to do Anki to make sure I get it done. It's really important to do these things. So then um, dinner usually takes less than an hour to make and eat. And I actually don't have anything scheduled between like 5.30 or wait, 6.30 to like 
8 30. yeah i usually don't have anything scheduled from 6 30 to 8 30. i just kind of use that day or that those two hours honestly oftentimes i use that to study even more which i know sounds really depressing but welcome to medical school i usually just use that time to study anything that i really didn't anything that I set out to do that day that I didn't end up doing, which I can't believe I totally forgot this. I think I mentioned this during the Pomodoro, but it is so important to you to like, it is, it is so important to be clear about what you want to achieve in a given day, in a given study session, in a given hour prior to starting it. Because if you didn't finish it, try not to go to sleep without finishing it. Okay, try not to go to sleep without finishing it. Or if you have to go to sleep, because you know I don't want you to be sleep deprived. If you have to go to bed, make sure you schedule it in for another day. Okay, so I try to use those last two hours to get whatever I need to get done. Or you know, if I have extra time in my hands, then I'll you know maybe read a book or like take a bath or just chill out, watch YouTube, you know, just relax. But those two hours for the most part, they're usually spent studying, I'm not gonna lie. And then by, what is it, 8.30? I'm usually like ready to go to sleep and I'll like brush my teeth, wash my face. <laughs> Washing my face has been a, a new installment, okay? <laughs> it's, it's taken me years to remember to wash my face at night, but I'm there, okay? I'm there and I'm solid and hopefully, actually, I, you guys probably think I have clear skin. It's all lighting, it's all lighting, it's all, f it, I don't use filters, but it's all lighting, okay? Like I am sometimes amazed at how, <laughs> nice my skin looks on camera because it's 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 a different story in real life is all i'm saying so <laughs> yeah i shouldn't drag myself but i just don't want you guys to have unrealistic expectations that's all i'm saying uh, yeah so then i go to sleep at nine and honestly half the time i will like you know tuck myself into bed and then watch youtube for longer than I should. But I usually end up going to sleep by 9.30, if not 10 at the latest. And then I wake up at five. And so that gives me like seven, seven hours of sleep. And that's, that's, that's my life. That's my life. And I can honestly say that throughout the entire first quarter, like that was literally my life. And I kind of expect that to be my life moving forward. Cause I, I can't see what could change. I guess you could say I could work out less, but I'm not interested in working out less. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that is the day in the life that you asked for. You know, I'm I'm kind of interested to see how things will change once I become a PhD. I look forward to becoming a PhD so fervently. I think that's the only thing that keeps me in it, you know, because yeah. You know, I think it's very strategic that they put clinical skills so early because clinical skills helps me look forward to actually being a doctor, but like everything else that has to do with like the first two years of medical school is like really discouraging. I'm just saying, really discouraging. <laughs> and I'm just like looking forward to like, I can't wait till I can do research again. <laughs> I can't wait till I can do research again. Like I honestly feel that way. And maybe I'll get into my research years and be like pressed when my like, you know, experiments don't work but we'll see we'll cross that bridge when we get to it anyway i'm done comment down below how good you are with time management comment down below how strict you are with your routine if you're more type a if you're more type b what has worked for you what hasn't worked for you i do think sometimes having too strict of a schedule can backfire because it could stress you out if you didn't make a realistic schedule. And honestly, I'll make a schedule. And I don't really stick to it like that though, but I still kind of hold it up as like the ideal and I still strive, but like, I don't, I don't really stick to it really hardcore. I stuck to that schedule hardcore. I'm not gonna lie, like that was no exaggeration. Like that was really how my life was. But at the same time, like working out really does take longer than two hours for me. Cause I just dilly dally. Like honestly, when I, when the gyms were open, I would go to the gym and be focused because other people need to use the equipment that I'm using. And I don't want to look like I'm just there to hang out. So. <laughs> But like when I'm at home, I bust out singing and like I I go on my laptop and like do different things. It is a mess, okay? But I'm trying very hard. I personally kind of like working out at home because it just, I don't know, I get to sing when I'm working out. I can't do that in public because it's kind of weird. But yeah, like I do think that the schedule is usually just an ideal for me. It's not like always exactly how it goes down. Another thing that's awesome about Zoom classes is like a lot of times especially in the morning I'll be in the middle of making breakfast when class starts so I'll just like log into class turn off my video and continue making breakfast you know what I mean <laughs> so 
Oh my gosh. Anyway, comment down below if you struggle with time management or if you're really, really great at it. Comment down below any strategies that I didn't mention. We are a community. We are here to help each other. And yeah, that's that's. I think that's all I have. So like if you want to like, share if you want to share, comment if you want to comment. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. Or if you don't want to subscribe, subscribe anyway. Tweet me questions. Oh, stop saying that. Stop. Email me if you have a question. Okay. MDPHD and me at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. Okay. Email, not Instagram, not Twitter. I think I'm going to shut it down. Honestly, I, I should, I should just shut it down. Cause I don't, I don't do anything there. I pretty much just like made those profiles. Cause I felt like I should, I'm shutting it down. Find me on YouTube, email me. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>